now here's your host of This Is, John and Bill. We decided to do something different with This Is this time around, as you can tell by our intro. Um, we're not actually in a park this time. Um, we had some technical difficulties uh, in our last recording session, and we weren't able to bring you our normal type of This Is. So instead, This Is County at Lake Park. And we are going to be showing you some very interesting things. First off, we got an update with um, about the Blue Streak. Yeah, we had a very good update about the Blue Streak, actually. We also got a little bit of update on the uh, hotel, and it's in our workings right now. And how you can donate to the park and be able to make the Blue Streak come to you a little bit faster. So without further ado, this is Conneaut Lake Park. All right, here we have the paratrooper. Yeah, paratrooper's been here for several years, um, quite a few actually. It seems to be enjoyed by the people. Yeah, everyone seems to enjoy the paratrooper, and it's um, it's your standard fair fair. But hey, th this is what this park is really known for. Yeah, it seems to be moving pretty good today. Well, you know, these rides in the front of the park are a real treat for a lot of people. This is almost like a new modern section to this park. Yeah, they did a real nice job with this midway section up here. And it looks like we have the Turt to Whirl. Yeah, I believe that Tilt to Whirl. Um, I think that's one from the 40s, believe it or not. And you got the Skydiver there in the background. Skydiver, always a interesting ride, shall we say. Upside down. If you like it that way, or you can try to stay on top of things. Yeah, true. That's a little difficult at times, but it works. All right, here we have the um, flyers. Ah, flyers in this park. Uh, been here for many, many years. Um, just a really fun time. You ever crack them before? Oh, yeah. That's always fun. Eh, a couple people enjoying the park here. Yeah, and this is the main fur fair down through the, um, the center of this front section of the park. And um, it allows, um, it's a real open section of the park, too. It's, it's, it's really wide open here. Nice homey feel to it. And here we have um, the street going down into the, um, the older section of the park, I guess you would call it. Uh, yeah, um, pretty much the nice uh, older section, the uh, original midways and things are in that section. So works out pretty nice for people. And off to the left-hand side of us would be the uh, water park as well. Yeah, that's correct. It's off to the left, and uh, very good time here. Um, you know, people enjoy the water park during a hot summer's day like uh, today is. Yes, and here's part of the water park. Well, we couldn't show you all of the water park due to um, <laughs> decency laws, uh, <laughs> but, you know, we did ch get a chance to show you the one slide s section they have. Yeah, they have a pretty good slide uh, selection here um, for a smaller park. Um, they also have a Lazy River ride, which is actually situated behind this, I believe, John? Yes, that's correct, as well as a small, I guess you would call it kiddie pool? Mm, kiddie kind of pool, yeah. But uh, very well taken care of, uh, very well maintained. People enjoy it a lot. Another view of the slides from a little bit different angle. Um... This park has a lot to offer everyone. Now, I, I understand that the slides don't run all the time like normal parks. They um, sometimes tend to be like a weekend item. And here we have the... Th that's the tumble th bug. Tumble yeah. bug, yeah. Tumble bug. Easy for me to say. That's okay. I, I have a problem with this one, too. I like to call it the turtle due to my own home park. But, uh, no, this was installed in 1925. Um, one of only three in existence still. And I believe this is the oldest one. Um, yeah, from everything I've read, I do believe this is the oldest. And uh, it was down for a couple of years, but they made it run again. Here's another view of it. And you don't think that this ride would be that forceful, but it actually moves you around a little bit. I was actually surprised by it. I was too. I was kind of moving around in that car quite a bit there. And if you watch the people in this video, when they do come over these hills, they do move quite a bit. Ah, classic. The Dodgems. Yes, Dodgem, don't hit them. <laughs> and um, as everyone knows, that the Dodgem was actually invented as a way of relieving stress from the highway. 
Hmm. Sounds like we might need a little bit more of these, like at rest stops. That could be always a great improvement. Yeah, here we go around and around. Dodge them, don't hit them, no head-ons, but hey, these are fun. Yeah, well, at least Ooh. I hope he learns how to drive soon. Uh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> eh, always a good way for a child to uh, get a sense of freedom for a few moments at least. Yeah, yeah, but like everything else, it comes to a grinding halt. And it's time to get off. Double, double, boil and trouble. I believe there's a witch's brew a brewing. Mm, my cauldron's burning and my fire's fully hot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a sort of a unique ride because you don't really see these that often anymore. This one, I believe, is actually themed to Hansel and, Hansel and Gretel. Yes, that's correct. And they do provide a unique adventure, though a, a very odd theming. Oh, yes, but nevertheless, a great ride. Ah, and here we have the Trabant. Yes, um, it's classic Wipeout, I believe. Okay. Um, the type of ride it is, actually. Yeah, these, some of them I know are themed to, like, a roulette wheel, things like that, or a skirt. Yeah, yeah, th they're, they're real common, and, um, they tend to be, per um, pretty prominent in different parks. That just tells you how good the design was. Yeah, it's a rather enjoyable ride, so people are enjoying it. The Prince of the Midway, the carousel. Oh, and this carousel is a beautiful one. Bit of a shaky pass, but... Well, you know, when you, the finances are down and you've got a pile of money sitting around and you need it to keep going, hey, you know, sometimes um, you got to make glue when you can. Yeah, well, unfortunately, but it, it's still a very good carousel. Uh, I actually hear they are in process of restoring the original band organ for this carousel. That is correct. And they did get some um, bonuses out of this because they had some independent carvers carve the um, the front row of the co horses. And you have some very unique um, new horses now on this carousel where the back row is still the original um, horses on the carousel. I believe those were carved in Mansfield, Ohio, John? Um, a few of them are carved in Mansfield, Ohio. There's a couple that are carved by a different company as well as, I believe, a couple independents that were sponsored horses to be carved for this ride. So it's a, sort of an eclectic um, carousel now. Well, you know, but you always have to have a great carousel at a park, and this one definitely fits the bill. Also at the top, I mean, you, you can notice in the video that they have painting, uh, painted scenes of this park in the past. Which adds a nice um, bit of class as well as um, sense of history to this park. Oh, this park is all about history, John. Um, I mean, they, they know their sense of it. They know what history they have, and they like to uh, put that out there for everyone. And this um, park is just always just chock full of little, little things that just surprise you, such as the music box. A little bit different vehicle <laughs> on the music box here. But it's still a music box, which makes it just fun. Oh, yeah, this ride's always fun. You get some nice lateral Gs, um, you know, riding around outside. You get a little bit of a breeze off of it. It's great. And we're coming to a stop on this one. But they do have a great cycle time. Yes, they do. It's a, it's a little bit, um, the cycle times at this park tend to be a little bit longer, though. The Devil's Den. Haha, <laughs> classic 1968 dark ride. Pretzel Amusement Company. Also gravity powered. Um, you actually go around a corner, hit a lift chain, and once you get to the top, you're released and the gravity of your vehicle takes you through the rest of the ride. Um, one of only two. It sort of gives you like a um, little bit of a wild mouse type feel when you go because it has the switchbacks. Hey, why don't we take a ride on it? All right, that sounds great. And here we are on the lift chain.
Yeah, and you can see the infamous gum wall there. As well as there. And here goes the hill. Here's the kitty ride. Kitty section, excuse me. And here we go in Kitty Land with the, um, this is a Humphrey ride, I believe. It's a boat ride. Yeah. A lot of these, there's just a lot of little rides here in Kitty Land, but that's what Kitty Lands are for. They're not big rides. And here we have the uh, boat ride again. And um, these are really hard to find anymore in the Kitty section of parks due to the fact that they have water involved in them and the boats would rust out and corrode after a period of time. The upkeep on it is usually the current for putting them in anymore. Now this does seem to fit the uh, decor of this park with Conneaut Lake and you do have a boat ride for the children so these uh, tykes on this seem to be enjoying it. Yes they do. This, this kitty land is really uh, diverse. Uh, a lot of Humphrey rides, though, I noticed. Yes, yes. A uh, small carousel in the back. Um, uniqueness about this carousel is the fact that it's supposed to be a replica of the main carousel in the, um, in the park. Yeah, I believe it was also hand-built by a park patron um, who just had a very big interest in the carousel. Yes, I, I believe that was correct, and it's um, unique to be able to see a junior carousel such as this type with actual wooden horses. A lot of the, these junior carousels were, um, the horses were cast iron instead and don't have the warmth to them as what the wooden carousels do. The tubs of fun. Oh joy they are. Oh, yeah. Another little um, spinny kitty ride. Ah, uh, but here's the, the miracle of the Midways, the roller coaster. Yep, the Little Dipper, as it's known. And I think we have someone about to take a ride on it. Uh, oh, wait. Here we go, yes. We have a passenger. One passenger. Uh, hey. It was early in the day when we did hit the kitty land, so um, it did get jumping later on in the day. Yeah, there were a lot of riders on this later in the day, but hopefully this little tyke enjoys this. We'll find out. And oh, it's also hand operated. Right there, and he got his trip on it. <laughs> this is sort of strange. I don't know how common these are, but here's a small turtle ride, which uh, mimics the um, the turtle uh, tr treble bug, the tumble bug. Tumble yes. bug, excuse me. Yeah, kitty version. You don't. Y I mean, you really don't see a whole lot of those, or the large ones for that matter, anymore. And the rocket ships, classic 1950s. Um, Silver Beauties. Hmm. Yep. They used to imagine being a small young Buck Rogers or somebody in these, I think. Yeah. Here's a treat for you folks. The Pony Track. You don't see these in parks anymore. Especially like this. Usually they're like a little pony carousel. This one's an actual pony track. And it is a pony track. It's probably about a quarter mile track, maybe? Quarter mile, eighth mile track. Um, it's just unique because you don't, like I said, you just don't see these anymore in parks. No. I, I, put, I believe this one was put here in the 1950s uh, along the old railroad bed. Yes. And there's a myriad of other little spinny rides. Um, Beetle Bailey's there. There are little Jeeps. And... Um, Hey, um, I think we got some interviews coming up here, so I hope you enjoy the r rest of the show, and we'll see you a little bit later. Well, that was a pretty interesting start for the park, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was a great start to the park. In fact, uh, we caught up with some people that we weren't uh, really expecting to catch up to, but 
we caught up with, uh, who was it again? Tim Lisko. That's right, and we got to talk with him about the restoration project that's going on the Blue Streak right now, and uh, also about the construction, was that? Yes, the construction, and who's doing the construction, which is pretty interesting. Without, um, without spilling too much of the beans, here's Tim to tell us what's going on. You're doing the restoration of this fine roller coaster, which you see stretching out behind us here. And would you like to tell us a little bit about the history of the ride? The ride uh, it was built in 1921. It was originally had the red cars on it that you see now. It was redone in 2006 to fit the red cars back on it because they were redone now. The corner that we're redoing is retracking on the corners there, and that's being done by Leonard Adams. And um, he's retracking it and uh, relining the track as he's going. Leonard Adams, is that the same Leonard Adams um, from Knobles fame? You got it. Okay, okay that's, so that's, that's, yeah. that's very good because I've had a chance to talk to him and he's one heck of a character if you ever get a chance to one talk to One heck of a character is a little <laughs> bit of an understatement there, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he really does it. Now, um, I noticed that you're doing a little bit different, this doing a little bit different construction up in that corner compared to the original construction because they're filling in between. The, um, the they're putting the new walk planks through there. Doing new walk planks mm -hmm. on They're also it. doing a difference on the boards there, because he just rebuilt the metal train out there in Denver. Okay, he did the metal so train oh. out there. So he's in doing the same structure that he's doing here. Now I know that you've had several challenges with this ride. Um, could you uh, elaborate on some of those? Biggest challenge is the weather, weather and finances right now. I mean, it, we're a little bit short on the financing, and it's kind of running us. He cut his hours back a little bit, and we we're hoping by this week here, the following week, but we're probably looking at honestly August. Honestly, right. August for an August run, hopefully, um, probably in time for if your um, better. your pe um, your pumpkin festival or yes. pumpkin weekends or events that you have during that time. Um, now, I I I do know that this um, the, the financing has been a little is a little crazy subject around here. Could you could you tell people how they could help f um, help finance this ride for for well, you? First, I'm going. Uh, what was our Pepsi one? Our Pepsi. Uh, Pepsi Refresh Project. Vote on that. They're giving out a fifty thousand uh, dollar cash grant. 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 Yeah. Towards the restoration of this. If if we come in what top ten, and right now we're at thirty one. More votes, the better off for us. We'd appreciate that. Uh, we're uh, web pages are just sending towards the on our web page. And if you would like, there's T-shirts that you could purchase also. I mean, we're doing fundraisers here. We're giving discount rides and everything else just to try to get fundraisers into the Blue Street. That's great to hear, um, and we uh, hope to see this ride op operational. Bill, did you want to add anything? Um, I, I mean, I was just uh, going to add, you know, I mean, I've, I've been here many years and seen this ride, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, nostalgia around about this ride. I mean, are, are you catching that nostalgia bug from people that have ridden it in the past? or They're here. They're showing up. I mean, they, they can't wait. I mean, well, honestly, they're waiting. They're, they're emailing and everything else once it's getting going, once it's getting going. And like we mm -hmm. told them, Rome wasn't built in the day. That's right. That's right. So... so. Well, well, we're glad to hear it from you and uh, all the uh, information you can give us on it. So, okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. And if you get a chance, come on down to Conneaut Lake Park. Um, if you're out here, you give some donations to the project out here. Um, I'm sure our next guest will be able to tell you more about, um, about the donations and what other, um, what other fundraisers are doing out here. And until then, this is Conneaut Lake. We recently caught up with Greg from the Hotel Conneaut. Yes, we had an opportunity to um, ask him some questions about the goings-on at the hotel and what he's done with the hotel since he took over um, management of it. That's correct. Um, he was very informative about that and uh, gave us some great information, which uh, we'll let him give on to you. Without wasting too much of our time, here's Greg. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the, the history of the hotel here at, at Conneaut Lake? Um, Clinton divulge too much history, but I know it's a 114-year-old property. Um, had some tragic fires in the past, and um, you know it's basically about half the size it used to be. Uh, previously, had it around 250 rooms. Presently, has we have about 120 rooms operating. Uh, actually, the building is comprised of uh, another building that was moved over at, at one point in its history. Oh, so they actually moved a building over from. Was it another building on the property or just somewhere in the area? I'm not, I'm not really exact on the history, but yeah, it was another, another hotel in the, on the property. They moved in. It's, attached, it's actually the, the northwest wing of the hotel. That's quite fascinating. Um, we do know that originally the hotel um, 
if this is correct, Bill, okay. that it was only um, none of there was no air conditioning in any of the rooms. Uh, now? Yes, John, there was no air conditioning, I believe, and that was just due to the age of the hotel. Now we have noticed that you've done some renovation and actually added air conditioning to it, Greg. Um, yeah, we've. Um, well, I'll give you some of the background. We've uh, renovated the ballroom and we added the air conditioning and heating there, along with uh, added a lot of detail work to the ceiling. Uh, previous owners had a drop ceiling in there. We repaired a bunch of plumbing and whatnot above the ceiling, insulated and had heating and cooling. And then, yes, the, um, the rooms haven't had air conditioning in its 114 year history. We've added uh, heating and cooling to about 65 rooms, so we're a little over halfway there. So, and some, some, some people do want the traditional rooms without it, so we're going to leave a few without the air conditioning and heating just to keep it in that fashion. So. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I, was, I was just going to ask, were they going to uh, basically convert all the rooms over to air conditioning and heating, or just are just going to have a select uh, upcharge um, yeah. selected selection of them? Yeah, just a select number. I, I suspect we'll probably be in the neighborhood of 100 rooms will be heated and air conditioned and leave 20 or so without it, you know, just for those traditional uh, guests that want to keep it basic. Now, I know that you have a pretty good ballroom now in, inside this, um, in your hotel, mm -hmm. but how many people can be uh, fit in that ballroom at one time? Uh, occupancy says a little over 500. Uh, one of the weddings we had recently was close to 400. And then they were, we had some of them on the veranda and some in the the uh, ballroom and they still had room to dance so that was so you nice crowd. so you've been having a lot of weddings then or we have a uh, little over 30 weddings booked this year and it went up to uh, from 30 uh, from three weddings back in the 2009 so it was a nice jump so if someone wanted to rent the ballroom out how would they how would they go about doing this do they how do they contact you well, they can go just call the hotel at um, our number 213 um, 0120 814 area code, or they could go to the Hotel Conout website and just c contact us section and uh, email us and uh, what their request would be, and uh, we'll definitely get back to them with all the information needed to get it going. Um, what the the ladies who handle it, Tracy and Joyce, do a um, really nice uh, job of uh, setting it all up for the bride, so they don't have to worry about the fine details of decorating and whatnot. So they really make it beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry, beautiful for them and. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's been working out real nice. Well, that's, that's, thank you for your time today. And this is Conniac Lake Park, and we would like to th see you here. And we'll have the information available on the, um, on the bottom, right about, right about right down here somewhere, on how to get a hold of the people here at Conniac Lake Park and be able to get your um, reservations in there. Oh, I just wanted to ask you one other thing. Okay. Um, about how much does it um, cost to rent the um, ballroom for an event? Ballroom, um, if it's just a small... Um, party, family gathering, um, that's taken on a case-by-case -case basis, but um, for example, a larger wedding, we usually rent the ballroom for uh, a little over a thousand, twelve hundred or so for the, the space, and that includes all the linens, set up, decorations, and, and really making it nice, and then whatever meal choices or beverage choices they have. Real all-inclusive um, yeah. service then. Yeah, it's pretty much a one-stop shop. We have good DJs they can work with for us, you know. Uh, okay. Well, well, gamut of people need well thank you. Wonderful. Thank you once again. And um, this is Conniac Lake Park with Greg here. Yes. And Greg Sutherland. Guess Greg Sutherland. Mm -hmm. And we hope to see you here at Conneaut Lake Park. And now for the historic Conneaut Lake Park Railroad. It was restored recently. Yes, it has. Um, though I will have to recommend people not sit so close to the engine. It is quite noisy up in the front of the train. Uh, it tends to be. We took the opportunity uh, while we were riding the train here to um, take a look at the Blue Streak, which the train traverses all around. Uh, yeah, the Blue Streak, you can get a very good view of it from here. And here we're actually looking at the a miniature golf course of the park. Um, yeah, just a small miniature golf course. It's, it's a miniature golf course. <laughs> a staple in some parks. A lot of the smaller parks actually have a miniature golf course. Yes, they do. And we're about we're approaching where the train goes underneath the blue streak. Uh, yeah, you have a little bit of a tunnel um, here and underneath the blue streak. I heard an interesting story while I was at the park that um, one of the people that ran the train um, before the roadbed was a little bit taller 
and when they would go underneath the um, blue streak, you had to sort of tilt to one side to make it underneath there. And the people said, you don't have to do that. And she didn't, and, uh, well, mayhem ensued. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that story as well. It was uh, quite uh, entertaining. Um, unfortunately, she got a slight bang on her head, but nothing more, so all was well. Yes, and she later on became a fixture of the Sparks, I believe. I think, yes. Um, here we are looking at, um, this is the drop off of the first hill. Um, a nice little, almost a, almost a truck track here, John. Yeah, it is. It, it takes a little bit of a change of direction there, and it, it gives you like almost a little bit of a trick track type feel to it. Uh, this coaster was designed by Edward Vettel. Um, there are only two of his designs still in existence. Uh, one is in Denver, Colorado, and of course the one here at Conneaut Lake Park. But the great thing about both of those designs is that the original trains still run on the tracks. You don't see that that often. Um, I don't believe there's a Curtis Summers out there that runs the um, the um, trailer trains that are on that were on most of those coasters. No, and the Vettel design coasters. Uh, these happen to be an open front design um, with a, a, a steel mesh, of course. But um, the ones in Denver, Colorado, I believe, are a co closed front. I think you're right about that. But just his designs in general were very. They used almost, um, his first drop is rather steep for the day, for a 1938 design, um, rather steep, and uh, still gives a good pop to these day, to this day. I can't wait until this reopens. Um, we had a wonderful interview with um, the um, manager of the, um, man the leasing manager of the ride to the park. Uh, yes, he had uh, some good things to say about this, and we uh, know that uh, Leonard Adams is actually doing the restoration of the uh, tracking here, and you can see some of that work uh, coming up here in the turnaround section. Yeah, this is the section that they're um, concentrating on right now, and um, hopefully when they get this done um, later in August, um, come on out and ride the ride. Ah, yes, I, I can definitely speak from experience. Uh, please ride this ride. It, it's... It's a great time. Um, I personally have ridden it um, quite a few times. Um, one particular day in uh, 2004, I actually rode it over 250 times in one day. Wow. And you can actually remember those? Yes, actually I can. This, old, this uh, coaster and I are old friends, per se. Here we actually are looking at the old, um, some of the old uh, Blue Street picnic roads. Many uh, company and family picnics and reunions have taken place here. Yeah, this would be a wonderful picnic grove park, and um, maybe it still will be once everything is um, up and working at 100% again. I hope so. Um, they do have these picnic groves here, and they also have another large set of picnic groves, uh, actually off to the left, a uh, little bit across the park, but uh, lot, lots of potential here. Yes, there is. Yeah, we're about ready to pull in the station here, so make sure you have all your variables in place, and, and don't forget about any of those dependencies that you have um, with you. And the only picture on the um, middle is here. And coming around here. Um, a little bit of the ride left, but we're, we're almost coming to the station. But uh, another, you're going to get a nice view here of uh, when we come back into the station. I believe we uh, hit another tunnel, kind of. And uh, we'll be uh, getting a nice view of the little... Uh, Camelbacks or bunny hills, I usually call them. Uh, yes. Um, yes, the little bunny hills, uh, usually where all the action is on any um, wooden coaster. <laughs> and the, there's no exception on this one. It, it gives you quite a little pop off of those. It's not the matter of how tall the ride is, it's how well the ride gives you. Yeah, this is a very well uh, laid out ride. Uh, just your typical out and back, but uh, actually you start out the ride by going in a tunnel. Yes, that always um, is made to disorient people, so if you don't really know where you are or how long it's been until you hit the lift hill. Uh, the old disorientation trick. Gotta love it. Yeah, and it, it works. 
put people in a dark room and all of a sudden show them the bright light of day. Before you know it, you're over the top. And we're pulling to the station. Okay, everyone. Hi, we're up here again, and this time we have uh, Ms. Connie at Lake Park with us, and we're honored to have her with us. Um, we do have a couple of questions for her, since she is very involved with the, uh, I guess, the restoration and uh, preservation of the Blue Streak. And uh, if you could just give us a little bit of information on um, what you are doing as far as fundraising to get this going and to get this, uh, the project up and running, basically. Absolutely. Right now, we're doing a lot of fundraising. We're planning um, a party that's going to be on the Kaylee Bell. We're going to sell tickets at approximately $30, um, and all the fundraising, all the money that's brought in is going to be given right back to the Blue Streak to try to get it back open. Um, Carrie Faust and myself are giving massages on holiday weekends, $5 for five minutes. All that money goes back into the Blue Streak. We're selling T-shirts. Uh, we're doing a whole bunch of different fundraising, and any donations are always warmly welcomed. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Anything? Even, even the horse flies are trying to um, contribute <laughs> around here. Um, <laughs> um, what, is, what is your actual position here at the, um, at the park? Right now, um, as, as you had said, I'm 2010 Miss Connie at Lake Park, and all I'm really here to do is fundraise and help with LISCO's um, Park Restorations LLC and anybody else in, in the park that needs me. That's really great. So you're the go-to public relations person. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, um, we hope that um, the park is able to put its best foot forward here and everything. And we uh, thank you for your contributions here on This Is. Conneaut Lake Park. And um, we'll hopefully see you on the midways here at Conneaut Lake Park real soon. And don't forget to go to the web, uh, web page address. It's probably going to be somewhere down in here. Yeah, I right think right about, right yeah, right about right, right, right there. Right yeah. And um, donate. Um, oh, five, please, definitely. 10, 15, a million. It doesn't matter. Just a couple, couple you know, million you know, would be great. Get, yeah. get some money to these people, you know? Please. Um, we'll we get anything. this, <laughs> we get this <laughs> ride back up and running. <laughs> Wills, checks. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, this is Conniac Lake Park. Boy, that was a great park, wasn't it, Bill? Oh, wow. That was an excellent day. It was so much fun. Now, do realize that the park is a little rougher on the edges, but hey, they're coming back. They're going to have the Blue Streak open up later in August here. And so with that comes greater revenues for the park and a better opportunity for you as a guest to get a chance to really get a chance to see what this park is really all about. You know, that's right, John. The Blue Streak is a classic coaster. It's an ace classic, in fact. Um, it was built in 1938. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it also possibly includes uh, parts of the old scenic railway, which was one of the original coasters for the park. But uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, make a plea. Everyone, please come out and ride this when it does open up. And uh, actually donate uh, to help get it opened up. I mean, they're still accepting donations any, any time. And I think it's a great way to be involved with a, a real uh, historical landmark. That's right. There's also a couple other extra firsts and um, only available at this park as well. That's correct. Um, Conneaut Lake Park in 1925 added one of the uh, tumblebug rides and it is one of only three in existence still. Also in 1968 they added the Devil's Dun which is a dark ride. However it's by the Pretzel Company and it is a gravity powered ride. That's a very unique um, ride for this park and if you do get a chance to come out here definitely go on that because you won't be able to see one of those rides anywhere else except for here at Conneaut Lake and maybe one other park in West Virginia. That's correct. Um, also, when you come to the park, please visit the Beach Club, which was built in 1935 and looks much similar to what it was previously on the interior as well as the exterior. Um, stay at the hotel. I mean, beautiful hotel built in 1903, Victorian style. I mean, you've seen the inside of it in our videos. It, it's beautiful. Um, had a fire in 1943. And unfortunately, about half of it burned down, but the half that is still existing is wonderful. And we're not just talking a cheesy little hotel. We're talking Victorian plush. And if oh, you've yeah. ever, ever been to a, a real Victorian hotel that's been taken care of, you know what I mean. The woods are all polished. The floors are immaculate. Everything is just perfect. It's a dream place. Oh, you could go out in the veranda and take a walk, sit for a spell. I mean, look at the lake. It, it just gorgeous views from this hotel. Um, service is top notch, of course. 
Um, have a wedding up here, please come. I mean, this is this is the ultimate place for a Victorian style wedding. So if you have a um, chance to come up there, um, go to Conneaut Lake Park, enjoy the rides, enjoy the food, enjoy everything there is to offer there. At, um, it is to be offered there at the park, but come and spend money. They need the they need the revenue. And with that, this is Conneaut Lake Park. Precene has been a Castle Guard production, an association of Kayak Lake Park, and is under a Creative Commons License 3.0 Attribution Non Commercial Share Alike. Copyleft 2010, some rights reserved. Special thanks to Kayak Lake and their staff for allowing the production of This Is Kayak Lake Park.